Like with most games by Rockstar, you're bound to come across a lot of features that were planned to be in the game, but never made the final cut. In this video, I'll be showcasing 10 features that were planned to be in Bully, but would eventually be scrapped from the game. Let's begin. Number 1. Christmas Gifts as a lot of you know, Bully offers a wide array of items and clothing that you can unlock simply by exploring the game's map. Rubber bands, grottos and gremlins cards, and even garden gnomes all played a role in encouraging the player to explore, collect, and smash. Interestingly enough, Rockstar had plans on including a temporary collectible similar to the rubber bands, G&G cards, and garden gnomes. During Chapter 3, Jimmy would have overheard three students talking in the boys' dorm. The students being Justin, Trevor, and Pedro. While the conversation is fairly brief, it informs the player of a new collectible scattered across the map. So, Harrington House has purchased presents for the student body. That's really nice. See, I told you those guys aren't all jerks. To make it a little more interesting, we've hidden them all around town. Aw, oh, whenever I go outside, I get beat up and snowballs thrown at me. I hate winter. The risk-reward ratio only adds to the enjoyment, my young poor friend. By exploring the map, Jimmy would have come across Christmas presents. While it remains unknown what the player would have unlocked by collecting them, it is likely that they would have either received a weapon or some kind of clothing. It still remains unknown why this collectible was cut from the game. Number 2. BMX Tricks Now this is something that I'm really sad Rockstar decided to remove from the game. Jimmy was initially supposed to be able to perform a variety of pretty cool BMX tricks. Thankfully, several of these animations still remain in the game's files, and can be executed in-game via modding. While it remains unknown how the player would have performed these tricks, it is possible that Jimmy would have unlocked them by either completing bike races or by practicing in the skate park. Number 3. Train Station Speaking of the skate park, the skate park was initially a train station before being transformed into a skate park. You can actually still see the central station sign on top of the building. This place would have served as a way for Jimmy to quickly travel across the map, most likely arriving at the locations at the edge of town. In the end, Rockstar realized that the map just wasn't big enough to warrant such a traveling system, so they ended up scrapping the whole idea and replacing it with a skate park. Thankfully, we can still see some of the remains of what would have been a train station. And if you for whatever reason still don't believe me, then tell me this. How many skate parks have you come across with central station signs and train carts leading into them? Number 4. First Person Mode Back in 2017, some very interesting unused UI concept designs by David Bayoun surfaced. Among these were several cut features, one of which being an unused first-person mode that would have been enabled by pressing down the right joystick. It's possible that the first-person mode would have played a big role during stealth missions as a means of peeking around corners or expecting the game's environment up close. While a first-person mode still exists in the game, it's sadly only limited to one of the Carnival minigames. Number 5. Music Player Here's another interesting removed mechanic that came to light when the beta UI designs surfaced. Bully's unique and charming soundtrack has always been something that the fanbase, let's players, and game reviewers have praised. The player was initially supposed to be able to control the game's music by using the D-pad buttons. Nobody really knows how this would have played out, so I guess I'll just give you my take. The player could go to the previous track by pressing the left button. Likewise, they would press the right button to go to the next song, and up and down would have served as a way to control the music's volume. Rockstar eventually ended up scrapping this idea and replaced it with the ability to browse objectives and available missions. Number 6. Picking a Class Bully, oddly enough, had two Brady Games issues sold to the public upon the game's release, one of which contains a lot of interesting information about what the game was like before release. One of several interesting snippets of information is the fact that the player would have been able to pick which class to attend to. In this screenshot, we can see two class bells. Now initially, several people speculated that this was simply a glitch, and nothing more. However, two pieces of evidence disprove this idea. 
The first piece of evidence is a removed segment from the game's first mission. Upon Jimmy's arrival at the academy and meeting the school's principal, Dr. Krabblesnitch, Jimmy was initially meant to be shown around the academy by Krabblesnitch's assistant, Miss Danvers. Here's one of Miss Danvers' cut beta lines from this removed part of the game. There are morning and afternoon classes. You are expected to attend both classes at both times, but you may pick whatever class appeals to you. The other piece of evidence gives us a little bit more insight into how this cut feature would have played out. Back in late 2017, I managed to get my hands on a review disc for Bully. While this disc sadly doesn't contain any beta build of the game, it does contain a lot of information, some of which was never officially released. Among this information, we have a text file entitled A Day in the Life of a Bullworth Student. This text basically summarizes the average day of Jimmy Hopkins while attending to his classes. Here's a snippet of that text file. 9am to 11.30am. First part of the day. At 9am, the bell rings to entrance to class. All students are expected to be present without exception. Any student who is discovered truant will be severely punished. It's sometimes possible to choose the classes. In this case, the available options can be consulted through the D-pad. An orange bell represents the location of the chosen class on the minimap. The available classes include English, Chemistry, Art, Gymnastics, and many more. So to summarize, Jimmy could have chosen which classes he wanted to attend to. If, for instance, you had the choice of going to English class or Art, you could choose Art over English or the other way around. It's likely that this feature simply got confusing to players who did not pay much attention to Ms. Danvers when showing them around the school. Or simply that the feature felt a bit useless, so they cut it. Number 7. Car Passengers This is a very small detail, but something that I think would have made car vandalism a bit more interesting. Most of the cars in Bully actually have slots for additional passengers. Despite this, only drivers can be seen in cars, no passengers. Now this is where things get really interesting. In the recently released online modification for Bully, Bully MP, you can actually be driven around cars as a passenger. This removed beta feature was actually discovered by one of the mod's developers. They quickly realized that they could force the game to accept passengers into cars, and so they did. It remains unknown why Rockstar removed this feature, but it is possible that the clunky and buggy execution of Ped's exiting vehicles would have been made far worse by the addition of passengers. Number 8. Super Spud Gun Bully offers the player a wide array of weapons and items to utilize in self-defense throughout the game. Much like the Super Slingshot, the player was meant to unlock a Super Spud Gun presumably near the end of Chapter 4. This weapon can still be given to the player via modding, and functions exactly like a normal Spud Gun. It's likely that the Super Spud Gun would have dealt more damage than the normal Spud Gun, just like the Super Slingshot in contrast to the normal Slingshot. Come here, you little- Yeah, come and get me! Number 9. Watching Television Prior to Bully's release, several reviewers and game publishing sites were given a chance at playing Bully in its unfinished state. Among these were Game Informer, who actually wrote a very informative article on that experience. The article mentioned several things that ended up either being scrapped from the game or completely changed. One of which being a fully functional television in the Boy Storm common room, along with a Dart minigame. Sadly, both of these features ended up being completely cut from the game and replaced with the future Street Racer arcade minigame. While I do think that the Arcade Racer minigame is fun, I definitely would have liked to see how Rockstar would have executed having a fully functional TV in Bully. Considering that the original Bully was released just two years before GTA 4, it's possible that Rockstar had planned on making a bunch of television shows for Bully, and that they simply ended up saving that idea for a much, much bigger game. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that out! Stop, Gary. <laughs> Trying to watch this. Ah, swim team! Intellectual stuff! And at number 10, we have by far one of the coolest removed features. Bike customization. I talked a bit about this in one of my older videos, but some very sweet information has surfaced since. In the beta version of Bully, you had the ability to customize your bike to your liking. This is backed up by several pieces of unused subtitles in the game files, and some more concept UI designs by David Bayou. Much like the bikes you unlock by completing shop class, you could only store one single customizable bike in your garage. Speaking of shop class, it's possible that Jimmy would have unlocked more upgrades by completing the five shop classes in the game. 
Although, there really is no evidence to back that up. It's simply something that I feel would've made a bit more sense than unlocking bike after bike by simply beating shop class. In the first UI design concept, we can see that Jimmy could upgrade the frame of his bike along with the wheel and quite possibly more parts, such as the saddle and decal stickers. The handling of the bike would've been affected by which parts Jimmy decides to use. For instance, by purchasing the 35 frame, Jimmy's bike would've had more leverage. Likewise, by buying the rear 2.1 street tire, Jimmy's bike would've been slower but also easier to control. Something worth noting here is that the X button is indicated with a buy slash trade text, so it is possible that Rockstar had initially intended on having the player be able to sell different parts in exchange for other parts. The last piece of leftover from this cut feature is the bike model names and the handling IDs in the game files. This basically tells the game how certain vehicles are meant to handle. Here we can see that the blue flame bike you unlock in Shop Class 4 is named Custom Bike, with the handling ID Custom Min, possibly indicating that this would have been what Jimmy's customizable bike was like before you had even bought anything. We can also see that the Aquaberry Cruiser uses the Custom Max handling ID, possibly suggesting that this is what Jimmy's bike would have been like had he upgraded it to Max. Again, this is all pure speculation on my part, but it is really interesting from the perspective of a hardcore bully fan such as myself. If you enjoyed this video, then I'd recommend checking out my Bully Beta video playlist. This video has only scratched the surface of the immense amount of removed or changed features in Bully, so you're bound to learn a thing or two if you check that out. Special thanks to Deadpool XYZ, Simon Bestia, and the Nathan NS for providing me with footage and screenshots of several of these features. Anyway, that's it for this video. You folks, as always, stay classy. Peace.